You are tuning into Mad Genius Live, and all the way from the UK, we have Chef Judy Ju here to make her Korean Mexican tacos. And Judy, what do you call that? Comex cuisine, Korean Mexican food. <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Mad Genius Live. My name is Justin Chappell. I am your host. I'm also Food & Wine's culinary director. And on this show, we're covering genius ideas in food, travel, even entertaining. And if you tuned in last week, then you saw that we were with Melissa Clark, uh, my friend from the New York Times. She's a food writer. She's a cookbook author. She does it all. And we did everything pimento cheese, including making Melissa's pimento mac and cheese, uh, the recipe for that is available at foodandwine.com. We have a very special guest today, uh, all the way from the UK, somebody who I like to think of as my friend. Hopefully she feels the same way. We have Chef Judy Ju, everybody. Uh, Hello. Who is in New York this week from London. From London, but yes. But you grew up in Jersey. I'm a Jersey girl. I just <laughs> hopped the pond back and forth. So I'm so happy to be back in New York. I, I am a New Yorker. I, I feel it in my blood. I could feel it like yeah, New York. it's coming out of New you York. in New York. Yeah, yeah. I love it. Um, this is not the first time I've met Judy. I've been following Judy forever. And mm. since I've been at Food & Wine, uh, we actually have quite a few mutual friends, yes. which is a great thing. But uh, when I heard she was going to be in New York, I just had to have you on the show. Love it. You're my second guest, so I'm very excited that I you're here. I am so honored. <laughs> so not only is Judy a restaurant chef, she has three restaurants, but she is the host and the author of Korean Food Made Simple. This is her book, everybody. Um, so the book and the TV show, which is <laughs> yes. on Cooking Channel and Food Network. Worldwide. Um, worldwide. Yep. Uh, and it has the same name. Yes. And I watch it all the time. And believe it or not, we have actually ran a lot of your recipes. Oh. We have so many. Some of my favorite recipes um, on foodandwine.com are from Judy Ju. So if you check them out, just go to foodandwine.com, look up Judy Ju, and you'll get, I think we have a dozen recipes of yours. At least. At I'm least sure. a yeah. dozen recipes yeah. for yeah. everything from like simple shrimp dishes to um, like Hel healthy custard, dishes. Healthy dishes. They're all really amazing. Everything, yeah. So, Judy, before the show, we were talking about how you're a career changer. Like, there's a lot of us who are career changers in this mm -hmm. industry. Yeah. But you were in, why don't you tell us what you did before and, like, kind of how you got into this world? So, my life has been so incredibly random and serendipitous. And I do think that life is a little bit about luck, but to some extent, you, you, you make your own luck. And you have to kind of find opportunity, opportunity finds you, and, and just see what the universe brings to you, you know? And um, I started out as an engineering major here in New York City at Columbia. And I thought I was going to go into the sciences, but then I got there, I was like, this is way too hard. I was like, I am dying. I'm like the dumbest person in this entire school. I was like, I can barely survive. I was like failing all my tests and like, I was like, what do I do? So I was like, I'm going to pick the easiest engineering major, which I did, industrial engineering operations research. And I was It like, doesn't sound very okay, easy. But it was, it's considered one of the fluffier engineering, which I totally admit that was fine. But you use that and you go into finance and being in New York City, and especially back then, I'm like dating myself, but everybody went into Wall Street. Yeah. Everybody did. You know, I actually interned at Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley before I even graduated, because that's like what you did. And I just like, you know, was like a lemming. You just followed the crowd. <laughs> and so I was like, okay, I'm going to try this banking thing. And I found myself, you know, on the trading floor at, at Morgan Stanley. I did my two-year analyst program there, where they basically just try to kill you over two years, you know, like the long hours and everything. And I was doing fixed income derivatives, like totally nerdy stuff, <laughs> totally completely nerdy stuff. But, you know, you, you had a bit of cash in your pocket, you know, and I was learning. I was ripping around New York City, having fun. And that's actually where I got to taste my first, you know, bites of fine dining. In New, know, York, in New York. In New York City, but also when I was a banker, because I finally was making money. You're not like some poor, starving student, you know, like eating like ramen noodles all the time, <laughs> like cooking like pancakes in my, in, in my room and stuff. So that was like my first foray, I think, into really seeing like what cuisine could, could be about and what fine wine was, et cetera. And then after five years in finance, I was like, this is soul destroying and empty. <laughs> <laughs> Unlike the food industry, exactly. which is rigorous and terrifying. Yeah, exactly. Well, and I just decided, I was like, you know what? I want to do something I love. I want to create things. I want to do something that I have a passion for. And, and it was a lot of soul searching. You know, yeah. a lot of people don't actually even know what, what they love to do. But, um, you know, I realized that money wasn't my sole motivating factor. You know, even though you get paid handsomely in finance, I was like, kind of don't want to do it. So went to cooking school. We have the same alma we mater. We do. French. Uh, French Culinary Institute. Yes. Which is currently, I think, called ICC. International Culinary Center. Right. But we yes. both went to French Culinary Institute in New York City. So and cool. believe it or not, we were talking before the show, we were both 
Super top nerds. Of our class. Super nerds. <laughs> <laughs> top of our class. Yeah. And but that's very exciting. So you yeah. you went to culinary school. You got your your degree, which is funny because French Culinary Institute is classic French technique. It is. Especially yes. when I was there, and yes. I'm sure it was yeah. when you were there. Yeah. But you found yourself in this kind of world in the restaurants where you're like mixing all this food together. Yes, exactly. And I'm assuming it's because, so you grew up in Jersey. Grew up in Jersey. You went to school in New York and yep. like basically lived your uh, beginning of your adult life in New York. San Francisco also. San Francisco also. Came okay, back so to New York. Judy Drew yeah. has been everywhere, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> and now she has three restaurants in the, U mm -hmm. or she has two restaurants two in, in London mm -hmm. um, and one in Hong Kong. Yeah. Okay, so I think we need, let's get started. Let's get so, started, yeah. Like we just said, Judy Drew has Three restaurants, but at your restaurant, you were telling me um, when we were talking about you coming on the show and what you wanted to cook, you told us you have this. So first of all, we're doing tacos today. Yes. So Judy Ju told me she wanted to do a taco. She sent me an idea for her Korean Mexican tacos. So I was like, all right, we're going to devote the whole show to tacos. Yes. So I have a really. So the recipe I'm doing today is a brat and pepper taco, but the, I want to tell you my inspiration for this. Mm -hmm. So I was in Austria. I was in Vienna. I was on a vacation and. Um, every night I would go to the bars, and then after the bars here in New York, you go get what? A pizza. slice of pizza. Exactly. But in Vienna, you actually go to the Wurstel stand, so you get yes. sausage. So rather than stuffing your face with like a giant pie, <laughs> you're stuffing your face with bratwurst, bratwurst and currywurst. currywurst and all this stuff. You can see yeah. my picture here where that's one late night in Vienna, but that was like literally every late night in Vienna was sausages. So when I came back to the United States, um, when I came back to work, I was like, I want to do a column with all these fun riffs using Austrian or German sausages. So this is one of those. I Love also it. made a currywurst poutine, which is like French fries and melty cheese and curry ketchup. But for this, I'm doing a bratwurst and pepper taco. So it's not a traditional taco, but it's really fun. And then, so I'm gonna, we're gonna do my little riff on taco, and then you're gonna show us your Mexican Korean tacos. How about that? I love that? it, I love it, okay. yeah. All right, so let's get started. So first okay. of all, I have some peppers here. So I'm gonna let you cut some peppers. So I have two Cubanelles, which are sometimes called Italian frying peppers. They're everywhere in New York. Um, so if you want to cut yeah. those, I just have them, seed them, and cut them into slices. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get the bratwurst ready. So this is just a 12-ounce package of bratwurst, which, believe it or not, was actually kind of hard to find in New York. We were really? shopping. Yeah, we were like bouncing around to all these different. Um, Did you go out to the ethnic enclaves <laughs> to find the uh, we authentic groceries? We should have. Yeah. But we didn't. But yeah. I'm sure if we went to like Brighton Beach or yeah. something like that, we would have found some. But um, so basically, this is like a sheet pan meal. Um, mm -hmm this taco recipe I did, um, because I'm always trying to find, make stuff really easy. So I just take 12 ounces of bratwurst and I cut it into like, you know, anywhere from a quarter inch to half inch, a third inch, whatever you want. Mm -hmm. And I just slice it. And then um, Judy Ju over here is making beautiful slices of peppers because that's how I cut my peppers. So, and it's always great having somebody who understands food to cook with because I, if I'm at home and I'm asking like a family member to like slice pepper. They're like, okay, like what does that mean? Like, how do I cut it? Do, do I cut it? it like this first? Do I cut it like that first? And so funny. Right before the show, I told Judy, I said, okay, and then I'm gonna ask you to cut some peppers. And I and then I just said like, oh, you know, just like halved and sliced. And she's like, okay. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, that's good. Gosh, <laughs> it's easy. So one of the great things about this show, uh, which I forgot to mention, is that we're live. So we're live all over the internet, and it's very rare that you might get the opportunity to converse directly with Judy Ju. So I'm asking you, I'm telling you, all you people out there watching, that we want you to engage with us, ask us questions, interact. Um, even if you just have a comment or a suggestion, or if you've been to one of Judy's restaurants, please hit us up all over the internet using the hashtag MadGeniusLive. And you can follow me across social platforms at Justin Chapel, and Judy is Judy Ju Chef. Yes. Pretty much everywhere, correct? Exactly, exactly. So hit us up with your questions. So I'm going to speed this up. Yeah. I should have had some of these peppers cut already, but it's all right. It's like, can we leave some of the seeds? I don't mind to, yeah. actually. Well, this one's not, actually, it's not really hot, but are, are you giving it some kick? Because you've got to have some spice in your, you know, in your tacos. That Poblanos. one. Poblanos. So if you're watching okay. last week. There we go. Last week, so I had Melissa Clark from the New York Times here yep. last week, and we did everything pimento cheese. I did a, a Poblano pimento cheese. Ooh. which was like a really fun riff on a classic pimento cheese. And Melissa Clark made pimento mac and cheese in an instant oh, pot. Love um, it. Like I said, you can get the recipe online. But one of the things we highlighted were poblano peppers, which, so how would you describe a poblano pepper? I'll let you cut that one. God, off, um, one. well, 
I usually have them like, you know, when you roast them and you make, make them smoky and mm -hmm. things like that. It's got a deep flavor to it. They do. Yeah, it, it, they're not that hot, I wouldn't no. say. I mean, they're, they're pretty mild on the Scoville scale, could we get technical? <laughs> Probably what, like five or six, maybe? I don't if even that? know, but I think if we have that? some folks from Food & Wine in the background. Yeah. Can somebody please look uh, up? What, what is the poblano <laughs> pepper rate on, on the, the Scoville scale? scale? But, um, or if you're watching and you know the answer, there you go. please hit us up and let us or know. Or you can type fast and find out. <laughs> <laughs> I was asking right before the show, I was like, can, can I have my phone on air? Because just in case I want to Google something or... Ask Siri. Ask Siri. Oh my <laughs> gosh. I do have my <laughs> Apple watch on, so I could probably do there that. There you go. Right, um, so, so I'm just gonna toss yeah. all this in. Like I said, it's a sheet pan dinner. So we got our bratwurst on there. This is we, so easy. It's so easy. I love and it. I love it. Because who has time these days? You know, everybody's juggling. You know. Everybody's doing everything. So up, some, go ahead and hit that oil. on there. Olive oil. I have my yeah. salt and pepper here. Love it. Oh my god. I'm getting a little fancy. Are you kidding me? <laughs> are you kidding me? These are, <laughs> these are food and wine spice bowls that we you sell. You should online, just get actually. drones to fly in and salt oh and my pepper god. drones. Okay, <laughs> everyone this? forget that Judy Jude just said that because <laughs> we're gonna leave. Okay, everyone, reverse, rewind. That is what? our idea. We're gonna sell it together. Yes. We're gonna sell that idea together. I would love it. Like, bring the drones in and salt, pepper. <laughs> Ooh. And you can get them. Yeah, olive oil, everything. I love It'll it. It'll make me think of playing. I love um, it. Okay, so I'm just gonna get some tongs and toss this. But that yeah. makes me think of if anybody plays Wii. I'm like not a gamer. I, I yes, don't you play are. A lot just, of, just a minute. I'm really I'm not. Fine. But I do it's play. Fine. I do play Super Mario Brothers on Wii, and <laughs> it's funny because every time you get to a castle at the end of the castle, and mm -hmm. if you're watching and you play Super Mario Brothers on Wii, the new one. Let, please tell me you know what I'm talking about. When you get to the castle and you're fighting one of, um, when you're fighting one of the, whoever they are, this shows that I, re I really don't, actually don't play a lot of video Fighting games. the dragons? The fighting Yeah, the, like the, the Koopa's the, kids. The, I think the they're things, Koopa's kids oh, or nephews okay. or nieces or something like that. Anyways, you have to fight them in the castle. And towards the end, one of them always comes in with like a magic wand and he like glides over everything and makes it magical. And then you have yep. to now fight this person who has these special powers. Anyways, I digress. Okay. I'm talking so, about Wii. When yeah. we're talking, when we're trying to do sausage and pepper. And drones, <laughs> exactly. So that you just pop them in the oven. Yep, so I'm going to throw this in the oven. 425, I love it. about 20 minutes. And I love it. I'm going to pop, pull out my swap. But if you would like, oh, this looks so good. I'm actually going to. It looks so. It looks actually perfect. You can hear it sizzling. Oh, I love that? it. Um, so I have another question for you. Yes. Corn versus wheat versus corn and wheat tortillas. I prefer oh. corn tortillas always. I grew up in California and mm. one of my mm. favorite things about where I grew up was yeah. going to the taco trucks, you know, yeah. and they always serve two corn tortillas filled with stuff. Look at how beautiful that is. So nice. And it's so, so simple. Nice. Like this is basically like your whole dinner. And so all I did to make this, <laughs> to develop this taco was be like, okay, I love bratwurst because I just experienced it in Vienna. I'm going to put it with some of my favorite things, peppers, and I'm going to serve it in a tortilla, which I know is like, not really a taco, but why not? <laughs> I, I mean, today's invention is tomorrow's tradition. You could I love be, it. Uh, you See, could you, honestly You bring be Judy on, and this, not only you know? do you get yes. awesome food, but you get quotes like that. Exactly. <laughs> so, will you have me a spoon there? Yeah. Yes, so, we're yes, going to go yes, ahead yes. and. So, another thing that um, often comes with the sausages in Vienna is you get lots of mustard, you get lots of like horseradish and stuff like that. So, I make My this favorite thing. whole grain mustard. It's, favorite thing. And it, it like really packs not only a lot of flavor, but it gives you a really nice texture. You can put all of it. Yeah, you can I put all put of it all in. There. Of it. So, I we have mustard. a half a cup of sour cream, a half a, I mean, a quarter cup of whole grain mustard. And I just mix that together because that is actually going to be the base for our tacos. Wonderful. Um, so, Judy Ju is heating up some uh, tortillas, tortillas here. Multitasking here, multitasking. So okay. we were talking, also talking before the show about like how we heat up our tortillas. We have a skillet here just because we could do it on air, but actually yeah. one of the things I like to do is I like to wrap the corn tortillas in a wet paper towel and then I put that in the microwave for like a minute. Perfect. And they get like a really great texture. So and should we build some? And continue your, st your story of why we use the corn. Oh, I like the corn. Sometimes they get dry, but they have good flavor. They have really good flavor and that's really what I flavor. love about it. And I don't know why, but they, they're actually like a little less chewy than the flour tortillas. And so sometimes when I'm hot eating something that, ooh, yes. Hot one, hot one. So yeah. when I um, have tacos, yeah. I don't know, I just kind of like the corn and I like yeah. the flavor. But I have some friends who have corn allergies, so I just. But then everybody has a gluten-free allergy. You know, everybody, everybody wants to go gluten-free. So actually at the restaurant, we use a combination of corn and wheat. We're so, gonna do this. Um, I oh, you think, do? Yeah, because, you know, when you're doing something in a restaurant, it's much 
it's very different when you're cooking at home. And so basically, we have to make sure that they stay nice and moist. And so the flour and the corn, you get the t texture of the wheat, mm -hmm. it's a little bit softer, it keeps it moister, because the corn do does can, or can go dry. Totally. And, then, um, and we, we were actually talking about worlds. that, because we, yeah. we had pre warmed some tortillas that we were going to eat, and then Judy was like, these are going to get crusty, and yeah. they're not going to look good. Crusty, <laughs> not good, not good. Um, so I'm we not. got our mustard sour cream, we have our filling, um, and then two other things which I love to use because you can find it throughout um, Austria are cabbage or sauerkraut. I actually made this homemade pickled red cabbage. So I just do 50%, um, I do equal parts water and distilled vinegar. And then I do like a tablespoon of sugar and a tablespoon of um, kosher salt. Mm -hmm. Shake it in a quart container like this. I add thinly sliced cabbage and I keep it in my fridge for like ever. And look at that gorgeous color. And it's really beautiful. That's why I like so to pretty. do the red, actually. Yeah, um, so pretty. And I have some little tongs here. Oh, there they are. And so I like to add these. And then will you grab that microplane there? Yeah. So, Shall but I like grate? I said, if you don't want to make your pickled cabbage, you can also just buy sauerkraut. Yeah. And so the last, but certainly not least, because it's one of my favorite things in the whole entire world, is fresh horseradish. So. How much? Um, as much as I as love as it. As like. So this gives a big kick. A big, 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 big kick. So kick this to is, like open up yeah. the sinuses. The fresh horseradish root, kind of hard to find a little bit. A right? little bit, although it's becoming more and more available nowadays, especially with places like Whole Foods and all these um, kind of big shops. Actually, um, I go upstate quite a bit in New York on the weekends, and the big box stores up there and even the little markets actually sell horseradish root. And actually, our test kitchen assistant here, David, he actually grows. Oh, horseradish at home. Really? And he says it's like you just put it in the ground and it like grows. I love it. Like a week. Right, David? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is so pretty. Okay, so let's try it. I love it. So this it. is my brat and pepper taco. Should we do a cheers with our cheers. tacos? Cheers. Cheers. Oh. And there isn't a technique to eating tacos. Yes, you have to tilt you have your to head. Tilt. So you get you all the juice. Tilt, tilt the taco. No. Yeah. See, a lot of people who are taco novices like will tilt the taco. No, no. You got to tilt like your head. Into, into uh -huh. your mouth. Into mm -hmm. your mouth. Mm -hmm. So good. Judy dropped a piece of sausage on the ground. Oh, wait, wait. <laughs> Three second roll. I know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know. I know. I'll just kick it. Kick it under the counter. This is so good. So I that's love it. it. So simple. That's my simple. Let me grab a plate. That sausage is delicious. Thank you. Look, all the juiciness is coming up. Can I have another bite? <laughs> uh, oh. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, and if you need a napkin, because I need a napkin. Mm. There is one right here for you. Thank you. Just to like mm -hmm. get a little wipe, get a little clean. Love it. Um, so that's it. That is that's like it. literally it's a l under 30 minute meal. Um, I love it. I think that the horseradish and the, the pickled cabbage is really mm -hmm. kind of what makes it. Yeah. But you can really, like I said, you can use sauerkraut, um, anything you want. So we're going to go into, here, let me move that. So now we're going to make Judy's. Korean Mexican tacos, but really quickly, because we didn't touch on it too much, but I just want to say, so Judy Ju has three restaurants. Yes. Two in London and one in Hong Kong. It's called Jinju. Yep. So you want, you want to tell us a little bit about it? Because okay. I think we have some yeah. pictures here. So, so Jinju um, was brainchild of, of myself and my um, right-hand man, my executive chef mm -hmm. He's and partner. His name is Andy Hales in London. And um, it was born of kind of like, you know, kind of brainstorming and stuff. When we saw that there was a gap in the market, there was no good Korean food in, in London. But we wanted to make it cool and funky. Because for, uh, you know, myself growing up as a Korean American also, there was never a Korean restaurant that I could like take my business colleagues to and like not be slightly embarrassed. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, cause you come out and you like smell like right. smoke, you, you know, the fluorescent lighting, everybody's rude, nobody speaks English, they like throw food at you, you know, all this stuff. I was like, and, and you can't get a good margarita or anything or, or martini <laughs> or, you know, it was just, it was just not like a full Western experience that, that I was like, gosh, th this is, this is missing where, you know, you can always go to a very cool chic Japanese restaurant, a very cool chic Chinese restaurant. I was like, why can't you make a cool chic Korean restaurant? <laughs> like, God, you know, I'm looking for this, you know? So Jinju was born and, and, it, and it's cool, you have to come. So we have one in Soho, which is our flagship. Mm -hmm. Very, very, very fun area of town. And um, 
you know, and we have a DJ, you know, oh like we gosh. don't take ourselves too seriously. It was fun spinning the tracks and everything. We do so many cocktails. Um, it's just, it's just a very fun, edgy place. And, and the food doesn't have any ponce or circumstance to it. You know, we serve, we serve tacos on, on the menu. So a lot of it is fusion, uh, inspiration from, from my upbringing. You know, I call myself a French trained Korean American Londoner. There you go. I was waiting for that you know, one because you so, said that to me before and I was like, oh my yeah. gosh, we have to say that when we're live. Exactly. <laughs> and so I'm pulling inspiration from all over the world. And, and you know, Jinju was kind of born of that. And so these tacos, you know, obviously Korean Mexican cuisine is super popular here in the States. Yeah, totally. Whereas like everybody thinks I invented it in, in, in London. I'm like, no, I did not invent this. <laughs> I'm like, this is, this is not, I'm like, I'll, yeah, sure, give me, give me the credit. But it's something that is obviously hugely popular yeah. here and it has been for a really long time. And I think it's also because the flavors of Mexican food and Korean food go so well together. They, they really do, because it's melt. a lot of bold flavors. Yeah. It's like casual, but it could also be really nice yeah. and elegant. So you opened your first one in Soho in London, in Soho and then London. where was your second one? Is Hong Kong, baby. Hong Kong, there Hong you go. Kong. So we hop to the other pond and go all the way out to Asia. So there this you is go. a picture of your beautiful bar there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Hong Kong was the second one, and one of the things that you pointed out before we went live was that you opened three restaurants in two years. Yeah. I mean, that is crazy. Three restaurants in two years is is really, really, really tough. Yeah, I had like no life, mm -hmm. um, slightly suicidal, really stressed out. <laughs> oh. you, know, and, like, you know, it's crazy. The restaurant industry is crazy. It's really it's crazy. It's totally crazy. But, it, but that's why when you were talking about finance, I was like, I okay, let's be real. It, restaurant industry is also crazy. It, it's crazy, but at least in finance, you get paid quite nicely. <laughs> <laughs> And, and, in, and in the restaurant industry, you have to open three restaurants before you make a dollar, exactly, right? Exactly. Um, okay, so the, the recipe yes. that you're making, your Korean Mexican tacos, yes. actually, you said is one of the best sellers at yes, your restaurant. Yes, You serve it at all three. Yes, and I think that also has to do with the fact that there isn't really any good Mexican food in, in the UK because we don't really have Mexicans. <laughs> it's, an, it's an immigration group that hasn't quite made it over the Atlantic Ocean. And so I also wanted to make tacos because I miss eating them. I know. <laughs> so it's a I little mean, bit of a selfish I don't know what choice. I would do without tacos in my life. I know, I love them. I love okay, them. Okay, so what's it. the first component okay. to the first, taco? First, we're gonna make a marinade. Now okay. we're making what do you want pork me to tacos. Do? If you could thinly slice this and okay. thinly slice this, right. um, you can keep the skin on. So that's gonna be for the slaw later. But you can keep 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 working. I'm just on that. gonna cut right here on this corner. Yeah, if that's, that's okay fine. With you. That, that's absolutely fine. Um, so we're gonna make pork tacos and. I um, usually use pork belly, but today we're gonna use pork tenderloin. Okay. I got yelled at because I use pork belly in everything. Because <laughs> I'm obsessed with it. So they're like, you gotta change up but the pork belly. But that's very common in cr Korean yeah, cuisine. It is, a lot of it pork is, belly, it right? is. And so today we're doing a little bit healthier. We're gonna use some pork t tenderloin. Now this has been thinly sliced already. Another trick okay. if um, that makes it easier to thinly slice pork belly is you throw it in the freezer for about an hour. Okay. And um, I'll get it here. Right here. Judy Ju went to the freezer, ladies and gentlemen. I'm, I'm back, I'm back. <laughs> but she's back, I'm gonna move I'm over back. to that. Okay, okay so, you show me what to do. So, um, that's good, get the paper off of it. So that's about partially frozen. So okay. it makes it easier to thinly slice it. So use a very sharp knife. So I'm gonna turn this, yeah. you could see, I mean, yeah. it's pretty firm. Rigor Normally mortis, this would... rigor mortis, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's slightly firm. So. So this is actually a trick I use all the time, and so when Judy Ju mm -hmm. explained this in a recipe that she does this, I said we have to show this on air because it actually is really smart. Yeah, and you can do this with any meat. So right. Beef, pork, you know, whatever. So anything that yeah. you re you want really thinly sliced, Absolutely. so you basically just put it in the freezer. Yeah. And thinly sliced, and it just oops. helps the meat, you know, obviously it holds together. Well, the end piece is always, the tail, just just chop the tail off. Okay, or okay, fine. That you, well, you can. It use slices this. so beautifully, yeah, though. Look at that. Look, it's so it's great. So you can slice it thinly, and that's what Korean meat really is all about. And most Asian meats is that you want everything sliced thinly, and not only does it cook faster, but also get all the marinades really get in there. And you can and see it. Flavor, I mean, look at yeah, that. it's fantastic. It's super thin. And speaking of marinades, so we're gonna do a very typical Korean marinade: soy sauce, umami flavor there, some mirin, um, sesame oil. So sesame oil has a very strong flavor. Do you? Do you like it? I, I love sesame yeah. oil. I, I actually use two different kinds of sesame oil ah. because I like to use plain yeah. sesame oil mm -hmm. when I'm cooking, but then I also like to use the toasted sesame oil yep. if I'm looking to get that and so like kick e of e even when I when I just pour it, you can smell the mm -hmm. fragrance and the nuttiness. Some sesame seeds also, some mirin. And this ingredient, the best, the best chili paste ever is very, very, very I'm forgetting about my tortillas over here, but that's not <laughs> is, is the best chili paste. 
chili paste ever. This is called gochujang. Okay. Gochu means chili, jang means paste. So I'm gonna dump that in there. And it's hot, but not too hot. Right. Scoville scale rating of... Somebody look it up, uh, hurry. I don't know, six, <laughs> maybe seven. It's, it's a blend of sweetness also. And you can um, pretty much, it sounds a little intimidating, because, but it's actually, at least here in the yeah. States, it's becoming more oh. and more available. It, you can get it on online retailers mm -hmm. all the time, everywhere. And you mix it into everything. It's not like a, a ready bottled hot sauce. It's, it really is a paste. So you need to break it down with something generally. You can just eat it you know, raw, mm -hmm. but I like to put it in soups, marinades, dressings, dips, etc. So you want to whisk that together so all the gochujang is is mixed in completely. And some garlic. Could you shred some oh, yeah. of that Marco so microplane the garlic can here? That. Yep. And then which is like a trick that we've used on every episode of I Mad Genius know. Live. Microplane is one of my favorite tools. It's good not just for, you know, things like nutmeg and whatever, but cheeses, hard cheeses, garlic. Mm -hmm. It's awesome for ginger because ginger has all those fibers in it, so it really breaks it down and cuts it apart. I just, just throw it in. It's fine. Yeah, perfect. And we're going to put the pork in. And, and this is like a really simple marinade. Simple marinade. And this marinade could work for a lot of different things. Mix it all around, get it in there, massage it. Massage the pork. Sing to it, become tasty. And, and also with the gochujang, if you don't like things too spicy, put in a little bit less. It's absolutely fine. If you don't like garlic, leave it out. You know, cooking is it's all about what, what you like to make too. So don't be afraid, you know, get in there, start, start cooking. And so it's not a lot of marinade either. It's like yeah. almost just enough to coat the yeah. pork. Exactly, and you want to let that sit for at least an hour. Okay. You know, which I think we because yeah. we're the magic of live video, exactly. ladies and gentlemen. We have one that was marinated earlier this morning in the fridge. Judy's gonna go ahead and take that out. Yeah. And should I get? Do you want your pan really hot, or do you want it? Um, you can get a little bit hotter. Yeah. Let's turn up the heat, baby. It's getting hot in on here. here. So Mad don't take off your clothes. Genius. <laughs> All right, so. Because we are oil. live on the internet. Oh, 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 here we go. <laughs> Let me move this out of the way. Okay, so yeah, it marinated an hour. Yeah. Put it in the fridge. We have our little swap mm -hmm. here. And now you're going to. Wait for that to heat up a little bit. We're going to make the slaw. Okay, which I started slaw. here. So, so can you grab the mixing bowl? Well, here we go. There we go. Okay, so how much cabbage do you need? Because I just went to town. Oh, you went to town. Ah, uh, let's just see. That's fine. Okay. Handle. And by the way, yeah. if you're following along, if you're live, you could get the, I believe we're posting the recipe for this on foodandwine.com. So definitely get the recipe there. Um, Judy was so nice to give us the opportunity to run the recipe. Of course. And so you're not just watching this for your health, ladies and gentlemen. You're watching it because it's dinner tonight yes. or tomorrow or the weekend. Cooking is not a spectator sport. Get involved. I love that. Get involved. <laughs> Start cooking yourself. Kitchen yeah. is not a spectator sport. Hashtag Mad Genius Life. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <We need> <laughs> so start. So oh yeah. Okay, cut, so cut, cut, cut. Chop, chop, chop. This is an Asian pair, everybody. Okay. Different so what's than the difference pair. between the Asian? So I'm just gonna julienne this or yeah, yeah, cut just, it into matchsticks. Yeah, yeah. Just, just julienne. Okay. Matchstick. And what is the difference between an Asian pair and just? Um, Asian the other pears, pears look like apples. They're round, they're big, they're super juicy. They do have the same consistency as uh, regular pears. If you can't find an Asian pear, you can use any kind of pear, like, like, like a Bosch pear is probably a good one that's slightly firm. Okay, yeah, I was Green gonna pears, say. Green pears, you know. Um, because you're doing a slaw, you probably want something that's gonna like hold up to a dressing. Yeah, exactly, and that adds a really nice freshness and flavor to this coleslaw that I'm making. And so this coleslaw, again, is a bit of a fusion. Korean-American fusion, and so we're adding some Korean ingredients. So it starts out, obviously, with some cabbage. And how much of this pear do you want? Um, that's enough. That is oh, plenty. Really? That, that is this. plenty. So tasty, right? Mm. So, so, so tasty. We'll dump that in. It has, like, a really delicious sweet flavor, but almost, like... Juicy. Is insanely juicy. Insanely juicy. But it, yeah. it reminds me, that crunch it has reminds me of um, jicama. Hicama? Oh, okay. A little bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it's ten it's more tender than hicama. Yeah, it's so nice. Do pick up an Asian pear. So we have the onion. cabbage, we have the Asian pear. And we've got red onion, which has been soaking in water for a little bit, because you want to take away that harsh bite to it. Mm -hmm. You know, because otherwise it just is a bit too strong and it throws everything out, out of balance. So give that a quick mix. And of course then we have to make 
That's our right. mayonnaise Same. mix. Yep. Here we a bowl. Yep. What is this? Greatest ingredients? One of the greatest <laughs> ingredients of all time. Ever. Ladies and gentlemen, can we please introduce you to the QP baby. The QP. Let's hold that right here. I okay. just want to show people because I, I want to babies? squeeze this because yeah. I want people to see how actually, for QP lack of a better term, is? supple the bottle is. <laughs> I mean, it's like a squishy bottle. And you get this. It's not in the refrigerator. It's, it's, it's on the regular. Uh, it's actually, you can get it on the Asian aisle or um, a I'm Japanese sure market. I'm sure you can get it in the, on the internet. Maybe? On Maybe the internet, not. definitely. Possibly. Sometimes it's sold in packs of two. I'm not going to lie. But you're going to use it, so it's fine. Yeah, totally. Okay. One thing I like to do is I like to eat those wasa crackers, the rye crackers. Yes. And then I spread QP all over it, and then I put avocado yeah. on top. It kind of makes everything taste better. It's so how much of this do you want? About a, about a half cup, quarter cup, something like that. Tell me when. Uh, when. That's fine. Okay. <laughs> and let's so add some more of this. So here you can see this. this. Let's turn this up. Oh, Ooh. Ooh, a little smoky. Smoky, smoky. Yeah. Um, okay, so what oh, else oh, are you going to oh. put in this? You're going to um, throw everything in. So sour cream. Okay, sour, sour cream. cream. Will you hand me one of those? I'll give you a spoon. Here a we go. A little spoon. So we have some sour cream here. Yeah. And some freshly squeezed lemon juice. Got to get fresh. the tartness in there. Some sesame oil, maybe some more mayonnaise. Let's see. We got to make sure that the consistency is right. Since sesame oil is going to give that nuttiness to it, remember we, we put it in the marinade too. And another ingredient, gochugaru. So this is chili flakes. These are the Korean chili flakes. Again, you can get this anywhere online. It has its own flavor, I have to say. Yeah. Oh my God, it's such a specific it's, it's flavor. It's really, really different. We, um, let me just show people. So it actually. I'm not, we didn't buy this bag thinking like, oh my God, we need all this. It actually comes in bags this gigantic. Yeah, it does. <laughs> but so I, you're making a commitment. <laughs> okay. But, but the, one of the reasons for that is because if you make kimchi at home, yes. this is one of the main ingredients in kimchi, correct? Yes, it is. Yeah. And you need a lot of it when you make kimchi. Exactly. Exactly. And it, it's really... Taste it. Yeah. It's kind of like smoky. Yeah. It reminds um, me of like... Scoville Scout rating. Yeah. I have no idea. <laughs> Someone look it up. We have so many <laughs> spicy things. Look at this. Exactly. You could kind of see... I don't know if you guys could see this here. See, it's very coarse, actually. Yeah. It's not quite as coarse as like crushed red pepper. No. But it's pretty coarse. Um, and, but it's much more coarse than like cayenne or something like that. But it doesn't have that same intense flavor. It's It, it almost has a... The flavor's a little fruitier. It's yeah, it's earthy, it's fruity. It's it does have a slight sweetness to it. Mm -hmm. it, it really is a different product, and um, I suggest that you have it up on your spice shelf next to the paprika, next to you know your cayenne pepper, etc. It just it's just another really great option. And it's one of those it's one of those ingredients that um, you, it might be. Zzz. What do we want? Oh, <laughs> where are the drones? Salt, salt. <laughs> okay, we put pepper oh, or just too. Salt. No, that's okay. fine. That's fine. Okay. I'm getting a little carried away. That's fine. Okay. Excellent. You, tell me if you want more. No, that's good. That's good. That's fine. okay. Maybe a little more. Okay. That's fine. I don't know. Yeah, that's fine. Yay! So that looks amazing. Look it at that. It looks so good. I mean, I just want to eat that. It. I love it. I love it. So let's do a little clear. Um. So the oh, what I was saying about the gochugaru <laughs> is. It's one of those things that you'll buy it and you're like, I don't know what I'm going to use this for. I'm not going to make kimchi, but it's but it, but once you start using it, yes. you're going to use it like all the time. All the time. You're going to put Same it on your avocado toast in the morning. You're going to put it on scrambled eggs. You're mm -hmm. going to use it in salad dressings or slaw dressings like here. Absolutely. Um, all right. So let's make one of these let's tacos. Let's make our tacos. Okay. You ready? Yep. Let's do you ready it. Ready for your Korean? Me You've had Korean Mexican tacos I have. before, I'm sure, right? No, I haven't. You haven't? No, but yeah. I'm ready for it okay, now. Okay, so we're going to start out <laughs> Got our pork. with our pork. And look how nice that is. Look how tender that is. Oh, here, I'll do the slaw. Don't call it tender, Lauren, for nothing. Yes. Nothing. There we go. <laughs> slaw on top. A little slaw. A little bit more meat there. A little and more slaw. And then we have all of our fun yes. toppings here. I love toppings. I love toppings. I love I have toppings. To say. So I'm definitely a condiment girl. I like to put a good dollop of sour cream yeah, I'm right gonna on top. I'm going to come behind you yeah. with... Kimchi! Kimchi Say that we kimchi. just finally chopped. Yeah, so kimchi is um, most commonly refers to cabbage. It's a fermented spicy cabbage. It is a form of sauerkraut. It's spicy sauerkraut, basically, and it is Korea's condiment of choice eaten every single day, and then we 365 have some days a year. Beautiful cherry tomatoes that we just sliced cherry up. Cherry tomatoes, so, you know, ooh. oh, no, no, no. That one broke. Okay, <laughs> there we go. There we go. Avocado down, avocado oh, down. Avocado down. Oh, so I can't wait to eat this. Ripe. This is going to be, this is almost like when you get a taco from okay, a Mexican taco truck and you, you need the two because it's so big. Yeah, I'm giving you a bit of extra avocado. That's good. 
Yeah, that's fine. And then we that's hit fine. it with a little a little bit chive. of chives on top. A little minced chive. Let's add some little color here. Sure, why not? There are no rules. <laughs> there we go. And I nice. think that's good. We're gonna dig in. Dig in. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's take a Look bite. Look at that. Mm. There we go. That is a meaty taco. This is a real meaty taco. Look at it's it's got a lot of girth. It does. All right, here we go. Mmm. It's amazing because there's a lot in there, but everything comes through. I get the okay, sesame, yeah. I get the, the chili, the kimchi, the avocado, the pork. Mm -hmm. And the pork channel line is so perfect for the taco because it's tender. Yeah. It's awesome. Judy, thank you so much for coming thank on the show. You. You're thank my you, second everyone. guest. It's such a pleasure having so you. Fun. Anytime you come to New York, you hit me up because you're coming I back on the show. I am coming back. I and love it. We're going to get you, I me, and it. Melissa Clark on a show. Yes, Everyone, I check. I love Melissa. <laughs> I love Melissa. <laughs> Everyone, please, if you're in London or Hong Kong, check out Judy's restaurants. Jinju. Jinju. <laughs> and also watch her show and read her book, Korean Food Made Simple. Pretty much. Celebrate available the everywhere. Olympics. Winter Olympics coming up. Oh, yeah. Up Judy's Korea. going to the Olympics. Yeah. So get your Olympic spirit on. Get your Lunar New Year spirit on also in February. So cooks a little bit of Korean this and February. And hit us up online after the show at hashtag Mad Genius Live. And tune in next week because we have another special guest all the way from Detroit. We have Kate Williams joining us. Detroit. <laughs> Detroit in the house. Love it. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. All right, let's do this.